Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. A treat especial, the hazard fraught four and a half inch grind air. Now this is the Canadian version, uh, master crap from Cambodian tire. Same thing, two for a dollar. Uh, my buddy actually got these on a special. I think he bought two for 35 bucks. And uh, he was kind enough to swing one our way so we could take her apart and see if his shoe was she was worth uh, burning your house down over. Now only just recently did we do that horrendously colored Makita grind there and it was a thing of beauty actually fairly skookum what for the price and all. However those in the know apparently have told me that it's nothing compared to the Metabo. Now now I got to apologize because I've been meaning to do a Metabo for nigh on a couple of years now but the fuck of it is somebody went and sent me a message on Patreon saying listen the only reason I toss a couple bucks your way, you friggin' goof, is because I want to see the Metabo apart. And that pissed me right off. I essentially told him to go fuck his hat in a as nice a way as possible. But you know how it is. I'm a grown-ass man. You can't tell me what to do. You're not even my real dad. I'm a bit of a contrarian. It's in my nature and it's a fault of mine. So I've been purposely dragging my heels not to do the Metabo. However, good news. I done went out, I selected a special kind, and we're going to do that very shortly. Like maybe even next video. Now if and you find yourself in the hazard fraught, you want to get the, this is the heavy duty version. And it's, I think, $29. And then there's a cheaper version that's $14. I, I don't know how they can do it, but I there are some clues as to how they can do it. You can't make this shit up. This cord is a Chang Su. Hong Chang, I, I I respectfully decline comment. Now this is only 18 American wire gauge. You'd like to see 16. However, if you're looking on the motor there, it's only five ampere rated. Looks like you're getting your money's worth. You know, at first glance, everything's nice and nice and tight. Anyway, uh, the handle's a piece of sh. Uh, other than the handle being a piece of chit, no bolt in there whatsoever, and ABS, feels like ABS plastic, not even reinforced. So the first time you drop this, yeah, there we go, look at that. Just straight ABS, no glass fiber reinforcing, so this is going to be the first thing to go. And they got one hell of an angle on the dangle here. Now, I'm not a left-hander, but occasionally, you know, like to switch it up. Feels like somebody else's hand that way. But I've never seen a hangulation outwards. Kind of weird. And then, of course, they... Oh, yeah. Oh, she'll tighten up pretty good. I figured it just turned... <laughs> what with the left-hand grip, you know, I figured she just turned to powder. But oh, it must be getting weaker. Speaking of weaker, I just read something interesting. 30-year-olds, uh, eight people below 30-year-olds, men, since 1985, has, have lost 20 pounds off their grip strength. Which begs the question, what's the difference between pink and purple? Grip. And I myself don't care for this kind of switch, little toggle switch. But thank fuck, at least there's a latch on there. Now the problem with that, of course, is there's going to be some fucking busybody. And let me tell you, they are everywhere. You know, we tr Despite trying to hit them with a two-foot steel and dumping them in a sump, sons of bitches, they are everywhere. Some fucker will go along and grind off that tab. Of course, because you're not allowed, you got to have a dead man switch on the tools. You, you have to have a dead man switch. But the problem is, if this doesn't have a dead man switch, then you're forever holding it like this, and your hand's right in the line of fire. You're going to, you know, turn yourself into hamburger meat because some fucking dickwad clipboard warrior decided that you can't have that little piece of plastic that lets it stick so holy i can see you guys are really busy i can help let me go get my clipboard it's my superpower rant over but if you're one of those dickwads with the clipboards fuck right the fuck off now don't take this the wrong way but here's a pro tip for you freshly minted inga nerds if it's 3 30 on a friday and the guys are fucking sweating to get something done. Don't bug them. If you have to leave your office because, for fuck's sakes, just go in the shitter and check your Facebook feed. Please. The stools on the tools will thank you for it.
Now on the Makita, some guys pointed out that there was a ramp on the back of this gear. That ramp was actually so that it wouldn't engage if it's still spinning. It pops this button up. Great feature. Uh, I guess guys, and that's probably why the Makita was worn out there, because guys were stopping it with the pin. And this one does not have that. Uh, I'll show you that. We're going to go over the electrics of this one, t'other one, and the future one all together. Because uh, it's kind of a pain in the, in the ass to set up the smelloscope and all that stuff. So we're going to do it all together. Now I find, for whatever reason, the cheaper tools, I guess there was a memo out. If you make a cheap tool, you got to paint. So there's always this speckled, maybe hammer tone or or metallic flake gray industrial paint on there and sometimes it's this ghastly silver i don't know why they can't just go with oh naturel but it's an added step which you'd think why bother because this is the a low end tool strange but that kind of paint job is the mark of the beast as soon as you see that you're like why now the guard this i mean guards at the best of times are a pain right in the cunning lingles this has this goofy fucking detent and it's going to be weeble wobbling all around. That is going to drive you bananas. Ah, son of a diddly. So disappointment. This isn't nearly as crusty as it really should be. And there's none of that durian and shrimp ramen packet smell. Mm. I might have to have a real good look at this. It might actually be worthwhile. Aha! Piece of junk. Look at the brush. Look at that brush. Look at it. Look at it. It's already chipped. <laughs> and I know what you're saying. Well, that's because I reefed it out. No, but there's no evidence unless it turned to powder. But yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like that's a factory chip on both sides. So that's crappy. But the brush is interesting. It is that uh, toothed pattern. What for making better contact with the commutator on startup and uh, on wind in. So that's great. Other than the, the breakage, uh, nothing really wrong with these. And right off the bat, this backwards is pretty slim. Yeah, you see, already getting. But that's not ABS. That feels like a glass fiber reinforced nylon, which is extremely surprising. Yeah, no casting marks though, so you can't, no mold material marks. So you can't really just guess at it. Oh, oh, what's this? Wow! Ha! Who knew? PA6 GF30 glass fiber reinforced nylon. That is actually the good stuff. It's not very thick, but it is there. And while we're on the subject of brushes, the brush holders, well, they at least they're metal. I'll give them that. But they're just pot, well, they're, they're steel and be flat plate and then bent all to hell and then electroplated with zinc. So really not the best because steel, terrible thermal properties. Steel does not transfer heat nearly as well as brass or copper. Now that's pretty crappy. And then the brush, the brush spring here is actually fairly, fairly sturdy. It's got good contact there and a fair preload. That's just a watch spring on there. And that forces the brush up against the commutator bars. Now this is interesting because we just found the smoking gun. This is exactly what's going to fail here. Is this little plastic chucher. And the heat from the brush is going to get hot. And then the steel is going to melt this cheap old plastique. And it's going to come loose and then it's not going to verky verky. That is your failure mode right there. And uh, yeah, good luck fixing that. Maybe some JB Weld or something if it starts to go. But... Yeah, if you overheat this, if you overwork this guy, uh, that's going to melt right out of there and drip out the backside. And unfortunately, that's the kind of drip that not even penicillin can fix. Okay, we got the soldering iron out. We're at 400 dungarees Fahrenheit. And that's, yeah, melting it right to ratchet. Oh, looking at the switch assembly, it makes and breaks both the neutral and the hot. And it actuates through this rod here. And there's actually some good snapshot on that, surprisingly. It feels good. 
Now this wire is UL listed, but it's 75C, so the insulation isn't rated for that high. Not not that great a cord, but again, it's only drawing 5 amps on the tool at full load, so eh. Gonna have a look at this switch and took the wires off. This is fucking nice, man. Ferrules. Well, I don't want to be premature. Of course, it happens to the best of us, don't judge me, but this is a gooder. Here we go. As I said, nice beefy snaptivity to her. And it's a job end, of course, from China, but it is U-L-C-E-T-U-V-U-L listed. And uh, 10 amps, it's, it's actually overkill. Nice brass connection points, and you're never, well, you'd have to be trying real hard to strip those. You'd likely strip your posi drive before you do that. And all staked on. Nothing wrong with that, man. Here's the field windings here. Nice silk and steel laminations. Very cute, actually. And it hasn't been welded together after the fact. No heat distortion. No rust, especially. I'm surprised to not see any rust from this just sitting around in some dirty, sweaty factory somewhere. But, uh, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. What the fuck? Now we have a look at the wire. It's huge. Hujo. You know. So that's uh, 17 or 18 American wire gates, just a magnet wire gates, just complete overkill considering this is 5 amps. Like, wow, total overkill. Here's nylon, that's uh, glass fiber reinforced. That's the same stuff that is in the brush holder, but uh, this brush holder will melt far quicker than this. And I'll tell you why I think that, because you have all the work of the tool going through this big chunk or this big chunk, this tiny chunk. So which do you think is going to heat up and fail first? Yeah, Avi. We're going to get into the rotating section here. And this, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised up until now. I noticed this. Yeah. <laughs> this holds the bearing that does all the work this is the big bearing the biggest bearing in the thing and it you know it keeps the 200 pound gorilla safe this is what it holds the wheel on when it's spinning a thing in at 11,000 ripples and uh, guess what it's plastic glass fiber reinforced plastic nylon is tensilely as strong as cast aluminum however it does soften at temperature and this fucking thing does all the work it gets hotter than a two dollar pistol so you're gonna have this getting all softened up when you're actually working it plastic is not the way to go for this front bearing housing and this is actually a lovely crown gear it's real steel not just powder and then cooked unfortunately you can see that yeah the finish on this bearing surface is pretty craptacular. But uh, nice to see a proper gear. That is not going to fail before this housing fails. And uh, case in point, just gave her a little tappy tap tap. What for getting this bearing out so I could show you all. And time for some focus, you fuck. And some JB Weld. Whoopsie. And the face of the gear has got nice big holes, unlike the DeWilt with the tiny anemic little, tiny little piss holes in the snow there. This is nice and big. And that way you don't shear that pin and you don't wear it out prematurely. Unless, of course, you're being a goof and you try and lock it while it's still turning. I mean, if you're grinding something, you can always stop the wheel on what you're grinding. I ain't saying, just saying. And this withholds the same trap for young gamers and you got to take the nut off in order to get the rotor out now this this is interesting here we got a little chamber pot on here it sort of rattles around and, and gets the air going to where it's supposed to or guards it from flinging debris and the grease itself nothing special just cheapo axle grease just like the stuff uh, i got from 30 years ago sitting in the castor oil jug Nothing special, no great sticktivity. So this, uh, when this gets hot, 
listen, you get hot oil next to plastic that needs to be mechanically strong, it's not a good thing. I mean, one thing to, for hot fuel or, or hot hydraulic oil in a tank that's designed for it, but it doesn't have to be mechanically strong. So they, they're overlooking something here. This is a definitely going to be a failure mode long term. Now, I'd like to know if you own this and have used it extensively, if the grease leaks out eventually. I'm sure, I'm positive it does. Of course, the dry gear is no good. But even worse is, you know, you're in your mother's hacienda uh, working on her Chesterfield and you get fucking grease everywhere. I mean, that just ain't no good. So you got to watch that. Uh, there'll be grease leaking out of there for sure. Now, I haven't found any foundry marks on this to determine what the 11 herbs and spices are, but we're going to use some acetic acid, also known as white vinegar. And we're going to find out if this is aluminium or magnesium. And there we have it. No reaction. Aluminium. That would be A398. Uh, it's got lots of silicone in there. Or silicon rather and a little bit of magnesium. The silicon helps the grain structure when it solidifies. Speaking of which, if you're casting your own aluminum and you haven't watched any of my casting videos or anybody's casting videos. Casting aluminum cans and shit. Oh my god, I can't believe you guys do that. What a hassle. 14 grams of aluminum you might get from an aluminum can. And it's not the right kind of aluminum. It's, it's very finicky as to the results. You need to get stuff with silicon in it so that the nucleation, when it liquefies and then solidifies, the grain structure is small. Otherwise, you get all kinds of voids and shit. I'm only just getting into casting, but I ain't the brightest banana in the bunch, if you know what I'm saying. So I have to make all my own mistakes. And partner, mistakes I have made. Learn from mine, get proper castings, bust them up and use those aluminum cans. Come on, man. Here we have the commutator bars. And you can see the pattern that the brushes are wiping on there. And as the brushes wear, that's apparently just for seating and for better, well, for better electrical contact. You can see as the brush wears, that pattern will disappear and it'll just be straight wiped. Of course, there's the uh, epoxy at the connection point. That's a nice feature. And the rotor looks well balanced. They've had a go at her anyway. Back bearing, no good. It is not sealed. It's not a sealed bearing. It's just a shielded bearing. So. It's going to be all sorts of schmoo that gets in there and wears the bearing out prematurely. Now these motor rotors need to be balanced because they spin them a thing so fast. This is turning at 11,000 ripples. What's the gear reduction here? How fast does this have to be turning? I'm telling you, it's got to be moving like a top. So, well that's weird. There's some cogging. See, whoa. Oh my God. That's horrific. What is going on there? That's just popping up because it's not... Oh no, there's some cogging there, that bearing. Oh no, the bearing's fine. A little chewy spot right there, but... Oh! <laughs> this bore is too small or the bearing is too weeble wobbly and the gear teeth are hitting that. Knocking on something. Wow. Well, that's no good. Oh, whatever. We'll put her back together and uh, she'll wear in. Okay, let's check the gear ratio here. We go one, two, three and a quarter. Say 3.3 .3 to one. Oh, that's nice. So that means this has to be turning at 33,000 ripples. I fucking highly doubt it. 25 maybe. This is pretty big man. It's a pretty big motor. I'm going to guess 25. So if this says 11,000. Yeah, 11,000. Bullshit. No way does that turn out 11,000. Now the long and the short of it is as shocking as it sounds and I don't want to say this really. Uh, this ain't teabag. 
for the money and for what it's designed for, which is very light duty homeowner use. If you use this light duty, you know, we all have heavy days, we all have light days. If you use this for only light days, uh, it's gonna last you. You're not gonna have any troubles with it because it is you know, like it's it's reasonably well built and there's no there's nothing nasty chintzy loose wire can you know nothing really bad about it. To you know, this is not right. This plastic shouldn't be that at all. And this is gonna melt right out of her if you give her a hot supper. But if you don't give her a hot supper, you don't drop the tool. You don't. It's gonna last you, man. There's for the price. Yeah, I. Actually, I'm blown away. I'd buy one of these, even if it wasn't free 99. That is to say, I'd go down to the States and buy this from Hazard Fraught. I wouldn't buy it from Master Crap because I fucking hate them. Vile, vile people. It, it makes me puke in my mouth when people use false nationalism, this rah, 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 go Canada, to sell Chinese junk. The customer service is horrific, horrific. So don't buy the master crap. Go down to the hazard fraught in the States and buy it there. It's cheaper anyway. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep your dick in a vice. Now, we're going to get her back together and make some sparks. But we're going to wait till we get the Metabo, the Makita, and the hazard fraught together. Because we'll get the Asmeloscope out. And <laughs> see if we can't fry something. Of course, so down in the doobly-doo if you want something special. I don't know, maybe you're that kind. You like a dirty Sanchez or a Spider-Man all up in your face uh, just put it down there and we'll see what we can do special requests of course anyway endorphins uh where was i oh yeah now how the fuck you supposed to get that back together